Recently, the Heritage Foundation, a D.C. think tank, released a report about immigration. Its findings cited the fiscal dangers associated with granting amnesty to the 11-plus million undocumented immigrants here in the U.S. What dangers did they find, you may ask? Well, according to the folks at Heritage, Hispanics have lower IQs than the average Americans. And this alone should be the deciding factor when rethinking immigration policy. Now, as insulting as this is, it's a view traditionally shared by American leaders throughout history. Racism still permeates through this country against immigrants that some people call illegal. But did you know that the entire American Southwest was Mexico just 167 years ago? Yep. California, New Mexico, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, Texas, all of these states were Mexico. <laughs> and what better day to commemorate this irony of intolerance against Mexican immigrants than today, May 13th, on the anniversary of the U.S. declaring war on Mexico. So how did it all go down? Well, the answer to this question doesn't really jive well with our history books. You see, at the time, American leaders believed in manifest destiny, a philosophy that white American settlers were granted by God to expand across the continent. It was that same rationale for the Indian Removal Act that pushed Native Americans west of the Mississippi River. And the only obstacle that stood in the way was the vast majority of this territory belonged to Mexico. See, between 1821 and 1835, Mexico was building up the territory of Texas and opened its border to American immigrants. But Mexico's new constitution had outlawed slavery in all territories, triggering a revolt led by the new American settlers. When Mexican forces tried to crush the rebellion with the famous battle for the Alamo, it was used to galvanize U.S. support against Mexico. Finally, Texas was annexed by the U.S. under James Polk. But tensions were still high at the time, and war with Mexico seemed imminent. With his eyes on California, Polk sent a mission to Mexico to try to purchase the territories of New Mexico and California. But Mexico refused. When they did, Polk sent troops to the disputed land between the two countries to provoke Mexico into war. And after a month-long standoff, Mexican forces finally ambushed and killed 11 American soldiers, giving Polk the perfect pretext necessary to declare war. The Mexican-American War lasted one year and nine months until the Treaty of Guadalupe, which resulted in the withdrawal of U.S. occupying troops from Mexico City, and a Mexican territory that was reduced by a vast 45 percent. This added by force the states we know today as California, Utah, Arizona, and Nevada. And of course, to develop these states into the new American empire meant immigrant labor. And who better for the labor than Mexicans? Yep, between 1850 and 1880, the U.S. government brought in over 50,000 migrant workers to work on developing land that only decades prior had belonged to Mexico. In fact, at least 50,000 immigrants came into the U.S. from the South following the Mexican Revolution every year. And it wasn't until fairly recently that U.S. political leaders adopted the notion that more immigrants in this country means less jobs for American citizens. As a result, the anti-immigrant anti rhetoric has been accompanied by a series of backwards policies. Case in point, the Mexican Rep Repatriation Act of 1929, where hundreds of thousands of Hispanics were rounded up and deported back to Mexico, a majority of which had been born here in the U.S. And fast forward till today, where Obama is responsible for deporting more immigrants than any other presidential administration. Yet. Congress has an opportunity to help correct 167 years of wrongdoing. And no, I'm not suggesting we give California back. But what we can do is provide basic rights and a path to citizenship for the nearly 12 million undocumented people living in the U.S. So the next time you hear someone complaining about having to press one for English, maybe remind them about the history of where they're standing first.